All right, so Matt, what did Spartacus say when the lion ate his wife? I don't know. Nothing. He was gladiator. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, You're back on track, man. Yeah, yeah. Back to the norm. (laughs) Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the graveyard. Thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Adam. And my name's Matt. Now, pull up a tombstone or settle into your casket and get comfortable because this is is Graveyard Tales. <laughs> All right, everybody. Here we are again. Matt, how you doing tonight, brother? I'm better now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've been rough, man. Ooh, Lord. Something got a hold of me. Found out it, it was not flu. It was not COVID. It was something else. One of these viruses, but. It, it's had me and Brooks down for about the last five days. Telling you, you got some weird tropical disease from your camping trip. I, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. And if you if you were one of those to swim in the lake, I'd say you inhaled some bacteria. But you're like me and won't uh, uh, swim yeah. in that. Uh, so no, don't just uh, just casually swim in the lake. No, right. So I can't I can't freak you out with that. But you know, we well, can say Brooks got it and then gave it to you. That's what we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. We did. We did have some friends that were in Jamaica during the hurricane barrel. Okay. Mm. Now they were fine. Okay. Their trip wound up getting extended by a couple days. Sure. To be able to get off the island, but um, one of them came back with with some kind of tropical illness, like you said, that she got in Jamaica, some kind of Jamaican illness. So Brooks was kind of like, did I get this from her? Yeah. You know, I was over there. Well, you know, but hers was, I I think hers was more of a, uh, of a stomach illness. You oh, know, yeah. so, something, something similar to Montezuma's revenge, you know? Right. Um, so that wasn't it. But the, um, the doc said there's a lot, there's a lot of these viruses going around right now. And and it's primarily because everybody was staying indoors and, and uh, distancing and, and washing hands and being super conscious about spreading germs. And a lot of them died out. Mm-hmm. And now we've had some that come back that were like, we, d- we don't know what this is, but we know yeah. it's a virus. <laughs> You know, and it's going to (laughs) suck. Yeah. And (laughs) treat the symptoms. Right. Get some rest and stay hydrated. (laughs) Yeah. I believe that. All right. So before we get into it, we'll say go check out the Podbelly Network at podbelly.com. We're happy to be associated with the shows on there. And if you want to go find a new show that maybe you haven't heard of before, but you know you'll like. And you know you'll like it because it's over there on podbelly.com. So go check it out. We also want to say go check out last week's sponsor, Me Undies. Go get the code. Go check out Me Undies. Um, They fantastic products, and we can't thank them enough for sponsoring the show. Um, Also, go check out patreon.com slash graveyardtales. We have a bunch of back catalog stuff on there that you can check out if you become a patron we've got a one five and ten dollar and our ten dollar a month not only do they get ad free audio and video they get the bonus episode audio and video but they also get our second show side quest which we're recording another episode of that today but they run the gambit of just weirdness it's just me and matt messing with the other one it's a comedy show it's not clean like graveyard tales is i i think you will enjoy it yeah i mean i understand that it it has when we started this adventure we we weren't really sure where we were going and then we kind of hit our stride this is literally just 
this is what Adam and I would be doing without the camera on. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I mean, right. it is it is as as raw and uncensored as as he and I would be sitting in the same room, you know, goofing off. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh and you get access to it. And you know, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty daggum funny, I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it makes me laugh even after we did it and I'm editing it. It makes me laugh. And I know it's funny if it does that to me because once I hear something, it probably is not going to tickle me again. Right. But this show, some of the things we do on this show actually get me a second time when I'm editing. So yeah, I, look, y'all don't know. It's it's hard to get Adam to laugh. I mean, he just <laughs> it's tough. I mean, I've known him for years. I mean, it's tough to to get him tickled about something. Yeah. It 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 drives my friends nuts sometimes because they're like, that was funny. I'm like, yeah, it was. And they're like, but you're not laughing. I know, but it, it, <laughs> it was funny. I mean, I'm laughing on the inside. Yeah. I, I, I'm laughing internally. You can't see my stomach shaking like a bowl full of jelly, but <laughs> go over there and check it out. Patreon.com slash graveyard tales. You can become a patron, help us out because our patrons are really what's keeping the show going right now since our ad revenue has kind of taken a dip and it, it, our patrons legitimately are keeping this show going. So yep. go over there, check it out. Patreon.com slash graveyard tales. Now this has been a long time coming, Matt. Tell us what are we talking about tonight, brother? So tonight we're, we're talking about a place that we, we've known about for a long time. And uh, we we've had some friends that have done shows about it. it. It's been it's been years since we've talked about doing this. We finally decided that now's the time. We're going to talk about Huska Castle in the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. And if if you've heard of this place, you know that there's a lot of weirdness about it. Oh yeah, be, beyond any haunting. Okay, there there is some real oddities about this castle that you don't even have to dig into the haunting stuff, but it's graveyard tales, so we are. Right. But we're gonna talk about this weirdness too. You know, it, it's it's a fascinating place. And when you you know, when when we were researching this, Adam, it, it is amazing to me. When, when I start digging into areas around the places that we're talking about, especially mm-hmm. when we're talking about Europe, you know, right. in Eastern Europe, more, more so, um, because it's so much older than the U S oh, yeah. there's yep. so much more history, human history, um, in Europe and the, you start looking into what what has occurred over the centuries in that region that is the Czech Republic, um, and, and and the architecture there, and and the the historical figures from there, it, mm-hmm. it's just it's fascinating. Oh my, yeah, you know my um, I had a friend that went to the Czech Republic. He used to go every year, and and I kind of wondered. I was like. Okay, you know that's great. He goes, you you don't know. He's like, yeah. it's it's fantastic. He's like, it is amazing. He said the the stuff you can see and do and experience, and he said it's it's a it's incredible. And and after doing this and looking at that, I thought, yeah, I want to I want to go over there. But all of that, you know, understanding all that, it really puts a spin on what in the world this castle is doing there. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about the history. We're going to talk about the oddities and we're going to get, uh, we're going to get into the hauntings that occur there. So Adam, why don't you, uh, let, tell us about the history of Huska castle. All right. So as we always say, go check our sources down the bottom of the show notes. You can find where we found all this information and believe me, there's so much history at this place that we would have had to have done a three or four part series to cover it all. Yeah. And my ADHD would not allow that. 
So uh, I would be bored by the second episode and we'd have to move on to another topic and you wouldn't get it all. So what we're going to do is, as we always say, the Cliff Notes version of the history. So go do some more research if you want to learn more about it and get into the minutia of the history, because it does get pretty crazy. Um, now, I will probably say the castle wrong. Um, I always say Hoska. It's I don't think it's Hoska. I, I've heard it pronounced Huska, Hoska, and Hauska. Yeah. I, I can't say Hauska. That sounds weird. I, 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 I say Huska. You know, a lot of the videos I watch said Huska, so that's kind of what I picked up. Right, right. I, I don't, I don't know the one hundred percent accurate pronunciation of it. Yeah, and that that's the problem is not being a native speaker. We probably won't, um, but I may say it a couple different ways. I don't know, but uh, I might just say the castle to keep from doing that. So <laughs> the castle is in the region of Northern Bohemia in the Czech Republic near Prague. So it's real close to Prague. If you've ever wanted to go check out Prague, you can hop over to Hoska Castle and check it out. Now it sits on this forested hill. that's right on the edge of this limestone cliff in the middle of nowhere. And I wanted to say limestone, because we talk about limestone all the time in paranormal activity and acting as a battery or a recording device for paranormal activity. So this sits on a limestone cliff. Now, it was built in the 13th century, probably, they say, on the orders of Odakar II of Bohemia. And it has no water source except for a cistern to collect rainwater. Now, it was placed near no trade routes, it has no strategic value, and it was built with fake windows and without a kitchen, and when it was completed, not a single person lived there. Yeah, yeah, nobody lived there. So, it was built and left. Now, the area it sits on obviously has a history longer than the castle has been there. And they found uh, archaeological evidence of ancient Celtic inhabitation from centuries ago and Slavic tribes that migrated there in the 6th century. So it that area has had a lot of different peoples coming to it, passing through it, staying there. Now, the first structure mentioned to have been built there, it was this small wooden fort. And it was there in the ninth century because it was mentioned by Vaclav Hajek in his extensive Czech chronicle that was published in 1541. So we know we have evidence, I guess, of that structure being there. Now, if there's in, if there was anything prior to that, we don't have any written history of it, but we do know that there was a wooden fort there as far back as the ninth century. Now, in that same chronicle, um, Hajek also recounts a legend, the story of a strange crack in the top of the limestone cliff. It was a hole in the ground that they say was unimaginably deep, and it was reputed to be the source of strange visitations. Local residents began calling it a hole to hell, and the villagers avoided passing anywhere near it after dark because they thought that strange creatures, half animal and half human, came out of that portal to kill livestock and wreak havoc during the night. They also believed that any person who passed near the site was also in danger of being changed into one of those creatures that came out of the pit. And they, they actually attempted to fill the hole with stones but they didn't have any success because everything that they put in there, it just fell out of sight and it didn't have any effect on the depth with nothing of this hole. They would put stones in there and it would never fill up. Yeah. So, I mean, imagine, you know, we're talking, you know, pre, pre 1541, 
Okay, so this is a this is already a legend mm-hmm. that Hajek is talking about, and you know you've got the people in that area. They don't understand anything about this hole, nothing, right. and they don't have any technology to try and discover anything about this hole, at least that we're aware of, or they would have figured right. something out. So here's this crazy deep hole. They don't know anything about it. And and now there's all these stories about monsters coming out of it. Mm-hmm. So along, along comes this Duke of the Duba clan. And he wants to try and literally get to the bottom of things. <laughs> right. So in order to discover the secret behind this supposed gateway to hell, he offered a condemned prisoner a full pardon for his crimes if he would complete just one thing. Let them lower him down into this pit on the end of a rope and then report back to what he found. Mm -hmm. Sounds simple. Now, my thought is, it's going to be dark. Right. What's this guy going to use for light? A torch? And they he's, just had he's him being lowered on a rope. Yeah. Yeah. They just had him eat a lot of carrots. <laughs> you can see in the dark. <laughs> like, you're trying to hold this torch as far away from that rope uh-huh. as you possibly can. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But so, according to the legend, he did it. And the man said, yeah, okay. But once they lowered him down into the opening, he, and according to the legend, he went down pretty far. Mm -hmm. There was a long period of silence. And then the prisoner began screaming uncontrollably from deep inside the hole. So when the Duke's men pulled him back up to the surface, all of his hair had turned completely white. And he was stark raving mad. Yeah. And he died soon after that. So he wasn't able to report on anything other than just Mm -hmm. his appearance and the fact that he was out of his mind. Right. Well, that was the report, you know? So some accounts claim that they did this more than once, but the same results occurred every time. Which is just crazy, man. So you got to think, man, that, that second or third guy, they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I just, I'll just stay right here. Right. Right. You know, what's worse, <laughs> what's worse. Yeah. I'm like, you know, just leave me locked up. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want to go down there. <laughs> right. Well, and you know, it sounds unbelievable. Yeah. Like it, it sounds unbelievable. But I may be mistaken, but I think there have been documented cases of people having their hair turn white rapidly. Yes. From things. So it it's possible. Mm-hmm. But I don't it's hard to believe that this happened multiple times with the same effect. But it just makes you wonder what in the heck was down there? If this is a true story. What did this guy see? Yeah. So uh, you mentioned that, that the hair turning white, mm-hmm. that is, it, it's rare, Um, but it, it can happen. And it is called can, uh, Canates Sabita, or also known as Marie Antoinette syndrome. Hmm. Um, also Thomas Moore syndrome. And it, these historical figures, uh, hair is said to have turned white overnight due to stress or trauma. Mm-hmm. And, and you, have, there have been people, um, I can't remember. Do you remember the show talk soup? You remember that show? Yeah. Yeah. The original host of that show had what they call a skunk spot. Mm-hmm. Had, had a white patch of hair, uh, right kind of on the top of his head to one side. And, and that can occur, um, 
from, you know, like trauma, you know, it can occur to stress. It can, ha- if you had to have like brain surgery where they went in your brain, oh, yeah. sometimes it, something happens where the, the follicles, they just, they, they don't produce the, it doesn't produce the color anymore. Mm-hmm. Hair still grows, but it, it just, it doesn't have the pigment anymore. Right. And I've it, heard it, too that 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 kind of hair is you can't dye it either. It, it won't. Oh, really? It won't hold on to the dye. Yeah. So that's why you you think why wouldn't you just dye that? Well, they can't. You know, mm. it it won't it won't it it won't stay. I think um, having teenagers is another cause for <laughs> quickly turning gray. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm noticing mine getting there. I'm just worried what it's going to be in six months, but. Now, one of the other weird things about this castle is when it was built, you know how most castles, you build them and you've got defenses that are, they're facing out for any of the routes that enemy would take up to the castle, you've got defensive positions put there. All of the defensive positions on this castle are facing inward. so. Most of the loopholes or the arrow holes, Mm -hmm. they're facing the inner courtyard of this castle. Now, a lot of people have said it looked as if it was built not to keep an enemy out, but rather to keep something contained. Yeah, like um, maybe like a prison would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, There's also no stairs leading from the upper floors where the the loopholes, the, the arrow holes are, down to the courtyard below, which also seems as though they're trying to keep anything from going up those stairs to mm-hmm. the upper floors and getting out. Yeah. It's not as evident today because after the 30 years war in the middle 1600s, the castle, the, the tower at the castle, the moat, and other defenses were actually dismantled as part of this decree issued by Emperor Ferdinand III, and he wanted to make private castles more accessible and less defensible. Mm -hmm. So they tore down um, all of the the defensive positions to make it look more inviting, I guess. Well, uh, that keeps keeps somebody from coming in and, you know, just uh, setting up shop in a castle and then going, yeah, I'm the king now. Right. If right. you don't like it, come get me. Yeah. You know, and then you've got this big impenetrable castle. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> Emperor Ferdinand was like, mm, "No, nah, that ain't gonna happen." Yeah. No, you, yeah. you're go- you're going you're going to take all that stuff out. <laughs> no challenges to my rule, so keep, right. take that out. Um, Hoska's earthen ramparts were also taken down at that time, so any of the stuff around the castle was also dismantled. Now, at the beginning of the 18th century, the castle was remodeled into a Renaissance chateau. And then during the communist period, it fell into general disrepair, believe it or not. Um, Now, Hoska Castle was built, like I said, between 1270 and 1280 and built during the reign of King Odakar II. Well, during the build of the castle, They actually covered the crack in the limestone that we mentioned. They covered it with thick stone plates. So, like, they they basically put a floor Mm -hmm. over the top of this crack, and they built the castle's chapel on those plates in order to seal that hole to hell. So they said, we're going to seal it, cap it off, and then we're going to put the chapel on top of it. Yeah, what what better way to close off a... A opening to hell. Right, right. Well, they then dedicated the chapel to the archangel Michael because he was the leader of God's armies in the battle against the hordes of hell. So another thing, if, if that's what you believe, that's what you do. I mean, mm-hmm. the archangel Michael is the one that's going to defend anything from whatever comes out of this hole. Now, there are also faded frescoes painted in the chapel, and they date all the way back to the 1400s, 
that depict the Archangel Michael. Now, there are a bunch of frescoes on the other walls of the chapel, too, and some of them include the crucifixion, which you would expect in a, a chapel. But the weirdest part about these frescoes is that on one wall, there's a figure that's painted on it that's not like anything found in any other frescoes of the time period anywhere in the country. So this is a very unique thing. It's a creature with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a horse holding a bow in her right hand and with her left hand aiming an arrow at a human figure. Not only is it really weird to find a representation of a centaur, uh, which is a creature of pagan mythology being painted on the walls of a church, but it's also the only known picture of a left-handed female archer. Now, in the Middle Ages, left-handedness was associated with Satan, and researchers believe that this picture is linked to the stories of the half-human animals which were said to come out of this gate of hell that was buried beneath the chapel floor. So it was a representation of what they're defending against. Right. So you've got a centaur that left-handedness is satanic. And I mean, my great-grandfather was left-handed, but in school, they forced him to be right-handed. Right. And so he wrote, even into his 80s when he died, he wrote like a child because he couldn't make his right hand do that. But yep. e even back then, we were like, no, you can't be left-handed. And it kind of stems from this time period where they believe that left-handedness was satanic. So to have a figure depicted as left-handed kind of pushes that figure into being satanic. Well, when you look at the Latin, which is where this stems from, um, the, the Latin term for right is dexter, mm -hmm. which is where we get the term, you know, dexterity. Yep. But the, the Latin term for left is sinestra, which is where we get the word sinister. Right. So, you know, left-handedness was always associated with being sinister, being evil. Right. So for somebody to make a point of, of painting an archer that's left-handed, there was a thought process behind that. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, again, like I said, it adds to the oddities of this castle. Right. It really does. Now, some of the historical documents that they have, they seem to say that the castle was initially built as an administrative center, but maybe more say it was built as a preventative to keep whatever was in the pit from actually coming out into the world. Mm -hmm. So. You've got some that clean it up a bit and say, no, it was an administrative center. Well, in the 1200s. Yeah. And I don't know how they want you to believe that when there were no, there was nobody there to begin right, with. So there yeah. was, there was no administrative staff that was there. There weren't like office buildings and it had defenses, but they were facing inward. So it leans more to the built to keep something from coming out of that pit. Whether there was anything in that pit or not, the people of the time believed it and built this Hoska castle to defend their land against whatever was in this pit. Maybe it was, you know, you know, no stairs and all that. It was so awkward. It said, go away. It kind of like the, if it was admitted, maybe it must've been where the DMV was. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, right. I mean, you no know, employees, no, nothing about this place said, come on by. Right. You know? Right. Yep. So come, come do whatever administrative business you need to here. We don't have any employees. You don't want to come to this place, but you got to, to get your driver's license. So whatever. Now, Hoska stood empty for many years during its existence. 
But some of the people that occupied it were, I'd say, some real knuckleheads. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, during one of the periods it stood empty, it was uh, during the Thirty Years' War. Well, at that time, a Swedish rogue commander, uh, uh, he commanded a group of mercenaries, and he went by the name of, of Oronto. He thought, oh, this will be a good headquarters for my rogue group here. So Oronto was supposedly a practitioner of black magic and an alchemist. And he reportedly performed some unsavory experiments while there. On top of that, his mercenaries apparently terrorized the village people while they were staying in this castle. You know, they, they'd go out and, terrorize the the neighboring village and pillage and plunder and stuff like that but that was until one night oronto was in his lab and he was apparently trying to find this elixir to life and there were two local hunters that had had enough they snuck up to the castle in the middle of the night and they shot oronto through a window in his laboratory after that the castle lay abandoned again, and it fell into disrepair until it was renovated in 1823. Now, in 1924, Hoska was purchased by uh, Josef Simonek, who was the president of Skoda at the time, and it's still owned by his descendants today. But during the Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia from 1939 to 1945, the German SS took over occupation of Hoska Castle. Now, in typical SS fashion, they destroyed all the documents that depicted anything that was going on at the castle that could prove whatever they were doing during that time. But locals claimed that they heard strange noises, saw bright lights coming from the castle. So that led to people that believed the Nazis were doing more crazy experiments there. They... They said possibly they were trying to open the gateway to hell that was under the chapel and harness its power. But you think, well, that's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. And they considered this, you know, part of their, quote, paranormal weapons that they were trying to develop. And they also say that at the time, the Nazis were trying to produce their master race at this castle you know, get a group of super soldiers to defeat the allies. And you think, well, that's absurd, but they, they're no crazier, I guess, than all the claims of the Nazis that were trying to find ancient artifacts like the Holy Grail, the Spear of Destiny, the Ark of the Covenant, anything to try to help them win the war. And we know that Hitler and his people were very into the occult and oh, occult yeah. magic. So it would not surprise me for them to take over Hoska and try to open this gate to hell yeah. in order to help them win the war. Yeah. Man, I watched a documentary about Hitler's obsession with the Spear of Destiny. Mm-hmm. You know, because supposedly it, whoever, you know, possessed the Spear of Destiny, um, would be, you know, unconquerable. Right. Right. You know, so that, that's always been the the legend. And of course, if you, if you don't know what the spear of destiny is, look it up. It's out of all of these things that, that Adam has mentioned, it's probably one of the, the less well-known, but it's supposedly the spear that pierced Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ's side while he was on the cross. Right. We may have to do an episode on it, Matt. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, it's a very unique artifact. Um, much like the Ark of the Covenant, like I said, it's just not as well known. Um, but it's got some really bizarre history, especially in, in association with Hitler. Right, you know? right. Now, after World War II, the castle returned to the Simonek family, and people basically forgot about it until the fall of communism in 1989. Now. It's a very popular tourist attraction, and people come from all over the world to see this fortress and the chapel and all that. And 
it's perpetuated the stories of the castle. Right. Right. And you know, the, the people that have visited the castle have had such wide and varied experiences and, and they've been pretty, pretty well documented. Even, you know, back in 1836, um, Czech poet, Carol Hyrick Maka spent the night at the castle. He was taking a walking tour of the region and supposedly he had a dream that he was, he was visited by this, this terrible, well, he had this terrible vision, which he later wrote out in a letter to his friend, Edward Handel. And Maka described his soul descending into the pit and then being transported into a hellish, mechanized future. He said, um, I lost my spot on here. Oh, it was Prague in 2006. Hmm. And he wandered around in horror and despair. Now, this is 1836. Yeah. So in his mind, he's seeing this bizarre mechanized future. Which you, know, you so, didn't believe. I sure. Mean, it's 2006. You know, that's right. So Maka wrote that he met a girl who showed him moving pictures in a small casket and that in darkness, he walked among high sandstone cliffs riddled with holes that projected an eerie yellow light uncannily similar to the modern uh I, i'm gonna mispronounce this word uh sidlist day sidlist okay which are enormous blocks of flats or apartments which in the present day are all along the outskirts of Prague. right right like i said this was in 1836 so Crazy. how did these visions of the future emerge from his subconscious? He'd never, he never would have seen anything remotely like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So could it have been a, you know, just a dream or is it possible that something there was able to transport him ahead in time, or at least in his mind? Yeah. But there are people who believe that that's exactly what happened. Because these descriptions, they are similar to what Prague looks like now. Yeah. Which or at is least, just you know. Crazy, man. It's I know. It, it, it is really bizarre because, you know, there, it's one thing for, for me to come to you, Adam, and say, man, I had this dream where everybody had flying cars and, you know, we lived on Mars and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Because we can, we can at least conceive of that in our, right. in our brain, he would have had no, there, there would have been nothing that would have led him to even have these images in the back of his mind. Right. Right. You know, to come forth. He'd never no, seen anything remotely like that. No, uh, analog that he yeah. has at the time to say, Hey. I'm just going to take this and scale it up and make it fancier. Yeah. Where nowadays we could say, well, there's this computer that it'll do this in the future. Well, that's because we know what a computer is. Yeah. He said moving pictures in a casket. Right. So that would be a TV. Sure. You know, or a movie screen or something. Because he didn't know what a TV was. So he said casket because it was... He what didn't know he, what it was. Yeah, yeah. What he could relate to. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, just that alone is, is strange enough. But today, visitors to the castle claim to have unexplainable experiences of all sorts, followed by instances of extremely bad personal luck when they leave. Mm. Some people say they feel this irresistible aversion to going inside the building in the first place. Like the building is telling them go away. Yeah. One of those people is Hannah McGee, 
who's the owner operator of McGee's Ghost Tours in Prague. Now, when she and the company co-founder Tyler McGee made their first visit to the castle, uh, accompanied by their dogs, Hannah says that she felt an extreme uneasiness when she came into the courtyard. Apparently, she wasn't the only one to experience bad vibes because soon the McGee's dogs, our dog Bobo, began barking and becoming very excited with nothing visible to provoke him. Hmm. We've all talked about how dogs can, you know, sense things at a much higher level than humans. Now, Mr. McGee described the feeling of being followed or watched by a predatory being during their entire tour of the premises. Now, later that day, upon returning to Prague, the McGees parked their car in the city center and left it there while they did their nightly ghost tour. When they returned, little more than an hour later, the vehicle had vanished. The police found it within a few hours already stripped of its valuables and completely trashed. I mean, they'd only left it for a little over an hour and went and it was gone. And this was right after they got back from touring the castle. Mm -hmm. So they're like, we have this weird feeling when we're there and we come back to go to work that night and our car gets stolen and trashed. Yep. And I mean, it said something about bad luck Mm -hmm. if you go there. So. Now, Huska Castle is also haunted by quote-unquote normal ghosts, and witnesses over the years have claimed to see something in the area of the chapel that looks like a cross between a human, a giant frog, and a bulldog. I want to see what that looks like. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I thought about the... You, there was a Scooby-Doo where they were in a castle that had a moat monster. Oh, you yeah. You remember that one? Yeah. And it was like a big frog looking thing. Mm hmm. There's like Scooby's trying to tell him, you know, and he's like, You were chased by a giant gribbit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I it's what's in my head when I read this. I was like, Oh my God. Now, the courtyard is supposedly haunted by a headless ghost with blood gushing out of its wound. Mm. Now, they say that this ghost runs towards the front of the castle and jumps into the air and vanishes. There's also shadow people that have been seen, and there's even cases of poltergeist activity. Oh, wow. Now, this the weird artwork throughout the castle doesn't really give anybody a real comfortable feeling either. Sure, yeah. You know, <laughs> and, so, and some claim, you know, like I said, that just being in the castle is enough to bring about the bad luck. Mm-hmm. You know, because it just has this weird demonic feel. Yeah. I'll try to post some pictures on Patreon that I got of the inside of Hoska. It, it does like, I'm weird. And I'm like, this is cool. Like I, <laughs> right. I, I like some of the things, but I can see how just walking through that, you'd go, hey, this is right. <laughs> what's, what's going on with this yeah. place? Yeah. Yeah. Really bizarre. You know, now. Other visitors have also claimed to see a line of people chained together walking toward the castle. Oh, that'd be weird. Now, each person along the chain has some type of horrific injury. Mm. And some people are said to be carrying their heads or other oh, wow. body parts. Wow. And a giant black dog is said to be attacking and biting the people along the chain. And some of these sightings have lasted as long as several minutes. Wow. That is, that is really unusual. Yeah. You know, for, for a, you know, an apparition like that. Yeah. That's a long time. I mean that, but my thought on this one in particular is that is a very detailed description of an apparition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And multiple people have claimed to have seen this. Well, well and, that is, I mean, uh, that's a lot going on right there. Yeah, it is. And it doesn't sound like a stone tape type thing where it would be people, no. you know, just it recorded a vision from the past because if these people have horrific injuries and are carrying their heads or body parts or whatever, this seems like it's a vision of 
like the afterlife persecution or something right. of these people. That is exactly what I thought. You know, yeah. if you if you if you're considering this aspect of the place being built on top of a gateway to hell, what are you seeing? Some type of image, mm-hmm. you know, from from some level of hell. Right. Are are right. these souls being taken to hell? Right. You know what? That's kind of what, what it seems this? like. Yeah, they're being escorted to hell. Yeah. And because the dog is like the guardian and the original tormentor, and yeah, it it that's crazy. Yeah, really, really bizarre. First time I've heard of uh, an apparition of that sort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd never, I've never come across anything quite like that. Mm-mm. Now, on the third floor, the ghost of a beautiful young woman in a white dress has been seen, and she's often looking out of a window. No one knows who she is, but she appears to be the most normal of all the ghosts in and around the castle. She's the one I want to meet. Yep. Now, a particularly nasty presence has been felt in the hunting lodge, and one guest. Zadina Vraslova was relaxing in that room with her husband when they both heard a strange noise like something hitting the floor above Mm. them. Okay. Zadina turned and saw two dark figures on the stairs. They had no distinguishable features, but she believed that one whispered something about killing some young girls. Ugh. So, you know, an an apparition with, you know, uh, auto, an audio component right. to it. You know, you can see and hear this apparition, um, you know, really, really strange. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the seller in this place is nicknamed Satan's office. Administrative. Yes, administrative building. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> They were right all along. Come full circle, man. Come full circle. It was administrative, Uh, but for Satan. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's uh, this is the lobby to hell. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, this is where they sort you out. You know, hey, welcome to hell. Here's hell's break room. Um, It's (laughs) cold coffee. (laughs) The the donuts are stale. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) we've sucked all the jelly out of the jelly-filled donuts, so pointless. Pointless jelly-filled donuts. Uh, <laughs> These are sadness-filled donuts. That's right. <laughs> Just some black goo in there. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a throne uh, embellished with horns and a trident in huh. in the in the cellar. I'm thinking about getting one of those for the recording room here. There you go. <laughs> you remember when we first started this? We were looking at those chairs, and I, uh-huh. I sent you that thing. It was like this big freaking throne. Yeah. <laughs> I said, like, here's mine. <laughs> I, I, I wished we'd have done that. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. We chose comfort over <laughs> coolness. <laughs> That shows our age, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was Amanda. Then she said something like the, a, like a, a mock up of the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones, <laughs> right? Like, you know, yeah, this thing's made of like steel swords. You know, mm-hmm. I kind of <laughs> want uh, Dave Grohl's uh, throne that he had when he broke his leg. All the oh, yeah. guitars. <laughs> I kind of want one of those. Dave, but, if you're listening, please send me that. I'll yeah, I'll give you. Right. A, yeah. Give you a couple hundred for it. I can't yeah, sure. probably afford what it's worth, but you can loan it to me. I'll give it back when I'm done with it. Right. Yeah. You may be able to pick it up at his yard sale or something. Yeah. yeah I'm not go. using this anymore. Yeah. How, how much for the throne, Dave? <laughs> yeah. I got, I got 10 bucks on me. Will you take 10? Yeah. It says 15,000. Is that the lowest you can take for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but in the, in the, in the cellar, They say that there is a black-robed, faceless priest that's been seen materializing in front of the throne and walking up the steps before it vanishes. That's creepy. I know. So that area there, everything that goes on there, completely points to the idea that somebody knew that this was a way to hell. Yeah, right, right. You know, 
or at least really believed that it was. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Z- Zuzana Pavlik Semenkova and her father, Yarmir, Yarmir Semenek, are the current owners of Huska Castle. They renovated the castle, and it now holds events like weddings. Uh, yeah, no, thanks. It's like a party place. It's like yeah. an event center. I would get um, married at weird at a weird place, but not there. Not there. Not by that faceless priest. <laughs> yeah, right. Susanna says she's witnessed many people faint during services, and Yarmir says that exploding light bulbs is a very common occurrence. That's what you want during your wedding reception. I I watched an interview with these two, and uh, they were talking about these light bulbs there that would just, they would start to flicker, you know, by, w- very weirdly, mm-hmm. and then just boom. Wow. Just, I mean, explode. So you and, know when it starts flickering, hit the dirt. Yeah. They said there was a chandelier that it would just happen all the time. You know, you're just like, yeah. and they, they had it checked and checked and checked. I mean, just, no, nope. I was going to say it's it weird, you know, it could be faulty up. wiring, but if they had it checked, then. Well, yeah. Now, one of the most common entities seen in Huska Castle is a shadow figure that's known as the guardian. And people who have witnessed the figure named it the guardian because it appears to be this silent sentinel either protecting visitors from the hole or guarding the area to prevent things from coming out of the hole. Paranormal investigator Andrea Trinity and her team spent the night inside the castle using the hunting room as their base. Initially looking around, they found a large room directly above the one that they occupied. Andrea says there was a significant negative feeling in that room, and it became difficult for the group to breathe. So they returned to their area downstairs and drew a circle of protection around them. The team lit a candle and placed it in the center of the circle. And they kind of sat there and expected something to happen. Yeah. Andrea says instead they felt complete silence. Really? So they got to thinking, well, I wonder what happens if we blow out the candle. Yeah. So they blew out the candle, completely dark. And in the dark, the group began to hear heavy footsteps walking across the floor as if someone or something was coming toward them. Nah. Then suddenly they heard a loud bang above them as if a very heavy object had been dropped to the floor in the, in the room upstairs. So they quickly relit the candle and again, they were met with total silence. The strange activity continued off and on throughout the night, but only when the, uh, it it only happened when they were in the dark, Hmm. when the candle was lit, It was silent. That's weird, man. Now, after sunrise, the group, they they felt safe to leave the circle. So they looked upstairs to see if they could find the source of the loud noises. Like, maybe a shutter was broken or something fell over Mm -hmm. or something fell off a wall. Nothing was out of place. The team found nothing that would have explained that activity. And Yaramir, the the uh, the current owner, says that he's just kind of learned to live with the activity. He says they have a ball every year, and during one of the events, he recalls being called over to a table where some of his friends were seated. They asked him to share some of the stories from the castle. Yaramir says he sat down and placed his glass of wine on the table. Suddenly, his glass began to move across the table toward the center. He caught it, but only after it had moved 20 to 30 centimeters. That's, that's a long not, way it, it for didn't a just, hat. It, it didn't just wiggle. Yeah, okay? that's, that's a long way for a glass to move. Yeah. Like, that's not a, oh, 
somebody bumped the table. Right. That's a, that, that's a, a decent distance. Yeah. And he said he didn't notice any kind of force around it, like there wasn't a wind blowing or anything like that. But as soon as he sat it down, it began to move a little more. And he said the table wasn't wet. And the group couldn't find any explanation for what they witnessed. So, like, if you've ever sat a glass down and the table's wet, you know, the the uh, surface tension of the water will kind of make the glass kind of slide mm-hmm. across the table a little bit. He's like, the table wasn't wet. You know, it, it wasn't wet. There was, nothing was there that would have made this glass move like this. Right. Especially right. not after picking it up and setting it down and it moved again. Now, others have reported glasses actually levitating off of tables. Oh, wow. Now, investigators look at this as possible poltergeist activity, as the entity seems to be able to interact with solid objects. Yeah. So, you know, you, like I said, the experiences there are pretty varied with a lot of different not only entities themselves, but types, you know, from, from shadow people to possible poltergeists, um, this odd, uh, apparition of people being chained together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, the, the headless guy running around I mean, yeah. just like, yeah, I'm with Adam. This, this does not sound like stone tape stuff this does not sound like a replay of historical events that happened there with the exception of maybe the the ghostly woman that's um on the third floor but she don't do nothing she's just kind of there yeah she's just hanging out that's why she is the most normal one that's (laughs) there everything else is totally bizarre so uh, you know it it really makes you wonder and adam mentioned the limestone how much energy is underneath that castle along with this extraordinarily deep hole that despite the fact that they've covered it up, I mean, you know, the legend says these things came out of it. People have actually reported hearing screams and cries coming underneath the floor in the chapel where the gateway to hell is located. Mm Mm-hmm. And some people have even reported hearing the scratching of claws. Now, some of that I can toss up to your, your, your senses are heightened. You've already got this stuff on the brain. And you, you, you hear something in this old, old castle and you think it's claws scratching on the floor underneath me. Right. But, you know, screams and cries, it's kind of hard to... You know, yeah, the, is the wind. Yeah, okay, maybe. Maybe some maybe. of it. You know, but, you know, the people that actually own this place, that are there, you know, all the time. You know, they, they the people that come in and do these ghost tours there. They've all seen it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of this that uh, I was able to collect, it came from from videos of these people talking about it, you know, not a lot of uh, articles written, you know, from interviews and so forth. They, these were actual videos, so I, I we don't always get that chance. Um, but we're because of all the information that's out there about whose castle. I was able to find um, an interview, uh, a, a show that interviewed Yarmir and his daughter, um, Hannah McGee, you know, they're all in this telling a lot of these stories. Um, and, and you can, you just tell it's some, something, something very bizarre is happening in Huska castle. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you just, it's, it's easy to just say it, it's sitting on this pit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah why why wouldn't you expect it to be happening it's look where it is right but you know like i said it, it, it everything is so strange you know from the from the construction of it you know to the fact that 
you know, they built this castle. Nobody lived there. You know, all the defense, all the defense, um, structures were pointed inward, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, for the artwork. And now in the modern day, the hauntings that are experienced there, you really got to wonder, man, is this, it, 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 if it's not a gateway to hell, what the heck is it? Right. Right. And you gotta, you also gotta think this, the people that initially called this the gateway to hell, it's not like that was the only crack they've seen in a mountain. Right. Right. It's not like they solid ground their whole lives. And then all of a sudden, this is the only crack in the earth that they've seen. <laughs> yeah. And so exactly. that's, that's why they go, oh, well, it's gateway to hell. No, they've seen, you know, big holes in, in rock faces before. And so what was it about this place initially? that made them go there's stuff that comes out of this there's mm-hmm. there's demonic presence here cuz yeah. they they weren't doing it to all the cracks in the cliff or you'd have thousands of these castles across the Czech Republic there's not there's one mm-hmm. so what initially happened here to start this legend what was initially going on that they were witnessing. Yeah. We don't have that evidence or that written down, but I would like to know. Right. You know, the, the, you know, the legend says, you know, cattle missing people missing, Mm -hmm. you know, you, you don't have the, the documentation of who, who went missing. Right. You know what, how many cows, you know, how often did it happen? Mm -hmm. But you got to believe that something was happening. Yep. To make these people react this way. Yep, exactly. Even if people were just wandering up and falling in it. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, something was going on that, that gave people this idea. They didn't just dream up this legend. Right. right. Out of the th- thin air. I mean, because like Adam said, it was just another hole. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's a hole. Don't fall it's down in that hole. hole. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be bad. Because, I mean, unless you see the bottom of it, how do you know any hole is not bottomless? That's right. That's right. You know, so there, there had <laughs> to have been. They're all bottomless until you get down there. Right. <laughs> all bottomless till you find it with your face. But, <laughs> That's right. You know. Yeah, it, it makes me wonder what, what actually was going on from the beginning. And was it similar to what is reported now? with visions and, and stuff. Could they have been seeing these visions of, you know, people being taken to purgatory and being bitten by large black dogs or what was it? Wouldn't it be crazy if we learned that there was some kind of weird gas that emitted from that and it caused people Mm -hmm. to hallucinate all this stuff. That would be wild. (laughs) I guess I I mean, I guess there's, there's no effort to crack open this floor and go down there and find out. No. You no. know, not no nobody is proposing that. At least I never saw it. You know, where right. somebody's going, "Well, let's bust out. Let's go. Let's go down there. We got the technology now. You know, yep. let's put a camera on a cable with a light. Let's just start sending it down there. Fly a drone down in there. They're not doing it. You nope. know, <laughs> just not doing it. They probably you know, don't want to know. They they may not want to know. Of course, if, you know, I, if I was making some money off of it and, uh, you know, the people were kind of spooked by it, I'm like, yeah, leave it alone. I own it. I say, no, you, yep, can't, exactly. you can't bust the floor up. Exactly. Um, this is my legend. That's you right. Leave it <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't believe that this is some kind of money making scheme by no means. I mean, you know, that the history behind it is, is, is so diverse. I, I, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't buy this place in the early 1900s and pass it down through their family to try to capitalize on it. Right. right sure. I mean, it just doesn't seem like that at all, but, mm-hmm. but yeah, crazy, crazy place, crazy place. Who's castle in the Czech Republic? You know, I, what do you guys think? I mean, you know, like I said, this is not a place where, you know, you, 
it's not one that you hear about all the time, but when it comes to people that are, you know, paranormal enthusiasts, they've, they've come across this, you know, you, what do you guys think? I mean, what, you know, is this just a haunted castle? Is all this stuff just kind of, eh, it's just on a big hole. And, you know, the legend facilitates a lot of this, but maybe some stuff did happen there that nobody, it's not documented anywhere that has made it haunting. Or was this facility built to protect, protect the people outside of it? What right. did, was, was somebody, you know, so terrified by what could potentially come out of this hole that they had to cover it with a chapel? And then build defenses pointing at it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, is you know, are we are we looking at ghosts? Are we looking at poltergeists? Are we looking at images of hell? What you know, what are people experiencing? Let us know. And one of the best places to do that is in our Facebook group. Uh, it's called the Graveyard. We have God thousands of members. And it's it's fantastic. You know everything from personal experiences to uh, people posting, you know, weird, weird things that the word stories, their grandparents told them about where they lived out in the woods or whatever. We, we want to hear it. Okay. And then uh, go and check out our website. It's graveyardpodcast.com. And there you can listen to the show. You can find links to purchase graveyard tells merchandise and you can become a patron. And as Adam said, we're we're really counting on our our patrons right now. They are they are really keeping the show going. We appreciate it so much, so much bonus material, uh, and a whole other show that you get access to. Um, please go go check it out. We appreciate it so much. Mm-hmm. Man, I tell you, this I've wanted to do this for so long. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yep. just kind of been like, ah, eh, maybe not. It's not time, whatever. And then we just kind of forget. You know, yep, until exactly. it came up. So until next time, we'll save you a seat in the graveyard. See you soon.